Yo, what's up everybody and welcome back to another Madden 15 online game. Today we got the New York Jets and the Cleveland Browns, which means Johnny Football versus Mike Vick. As old school versus new school as you're going to get it as far as, you know, the running quarterbacks. And of course, you know, Vick, he set the precedent in Madden. He was the guy, he was the 90s plus speed guy, a quarterback who you abuse the hell out of. Now, a bunch of quarterbacks have that high kind of speed, including Johnny Manziel. Here you see Vic showing off his speed at 34 years old. Still got some of those wheels here. Still one of the fastest quarterbacks in Madden as this dude gets a third down two completion. So, obviously, you know, none of these two are starting for their respective teams to start the season in real life, but it's Madden. When you're playing Madden, you want to play with these kind of, kind of guys. And right now, this dude has Chris Ivory going. He has Chris Johnson in the backfield, but he's also making use of Chris Ivory there. Get him to pretty much to go on here first down and 10 at the 11 yard line you see Vic getting a few yards out of a play that would have probably got nothing and plus I messed up the hit stick second down he runs wildcat like all right but he got a few yards of it so I guess it was all right for him but this play was definitely not third down just stopped on that fullback dive there and fourth down he goes for it he runs hard up and immediately goes for it I'm like all right good we got it bottled up but then Vic doing what only Vic can do it seems like I mean I had it all bottled up Everything was shut down perfectly. About to get sacked. He runs away from the two people about to sack him. Then two people decide to blow their coverage. One dude who was in a light blue is look at Johnny Manziel. He's like, anything you could do, Vic, I can do better. But yeah, one dude from a light blue. And then Joe Hayden, I believe, blew his like, deep blue coverage, which was the reason why Chris Johnson was so wide open. Because he didn't have to. You know, one guy was already chasing Vic. So, I mean, that, I mean, my mind, that play should never happen. If dude's going to blow a deep blue coverage, you know? I don't know why deep blues just don't seem to be don't, like once the play breaks down a little bit, it seems like deep blues just like go berserk. And we end up punting the ball on our first drive because third down. I wish I could have waited an extra second to throw it to RB there, but I just had to get it off before the pressure. If I, I maybe I could squeeze it in, but that David Harris made a good swat. And now all of a sudden this dude's back in offense and running the ball with Chris Johnson downfield. And not only does he get the first and then some in the field goal range. He's in the red zone now because of this penalty. It wasn't even me. I, I was like, oh, damn it. Did I really hit him out of bounds like that? No, it was actually Joe Hayden. And then this play almost gets a touchdown. Thankfully, a touchdown saving tackle by some dude there. Bringing up first down and goal at the six. And we get a sack here. So I'm like, all right. We can get a little goal line stand here. Get some sort of momentum going for us. Chris Ivory doesn't get much here. Now we got to make the stand on third down at the eight yard line. He comes out running a screen pass. And not only do we make the stand, we get the pick. And not only do we get the pick, we're turning it upfield, trying to outrun Mike Vick to the 30, the 20, the 10, the 5. Mike Vick gives up, and Tayshawn Gibson for the pick 6. So, um, I mean, there's, you know, making a goal line stand, then there's getting a pick 6. That worked out real well for us. We didn't have to do anything with the offense, and we tied the game up. And a lot of time has burned off so far. There's only been three real drives in this game. And I went three and out on my first drive. So, I mean, this dude's basically controlling the clock right now. So, for us to be in a tie game in that situation, I'll take it right now. But we do have to make the stop on defense right now just to make it somewhat worthwhile here. You see, he comes out running hard up. And then I accidentally get stuck on Buster's screen here. And I don't move. I, I definitely didn't want to be stuck in him. Unfortunately for me, Jeremy Curley was running a streak route. And he identified the fact that... I didn't move at the start of the play, and he burned me downfield. So, that was frustrating. It's just both the touchdowns I've given up have been frustrating. They've both been blown coverages, one by Joe Hayden and one accidentally by me with screens. So, I mean, if we stop blowing coverages, I think we have a shot, all right? <laughs> I think we have a shot. But right now, we have a minute to go, trying to get a two-minute drill going, throwing a beautiful pass there between the two defenders to Jordan Cameron on third down, and Cameron hangs on to it. Next play, downfield once again to Jordan Cameron, and once again, Jordan Cameron hanging on at the 37-yard line, trying to get at least in the field goal range. Johnny Manziel trying to use his loosens. Johnny shaking in the pocket one too many times. I was trying to throw it away there, but obviously it was too late. I already made one too many moves. And now now it's second down 19, but we bomb it downfield for Josh Gordon, who takes the top off the defense, burns D. Milner, and gets the touchdown to tie the game up. That was big for us to get that because, I mean, we might have not even gotten a field goal on that drive. Instead, we tie the game up right before half, and then this play, he's trying to get a field goal range of his own, and he completely screws up. He throws a pick to Mingo here, the second-year player, and Mingo takes it to the 12-yard line. Now, so we got a shot taking the lead. It was just second down and 19. Now, Andrew Hawkins is celebrating the touchdown that gives us the seven point lead just like that and that's why you know you don't want i mean you want to try to take your shot at getting a field goal or something before half but you can't be too ambitious you can't just you know chuck it up there because you could potentially give your opponent more points so 
at, that really, you know, flipped the script of this game instead of a tie game. Now, we're up seven, and we get ball coming out of half. Considering how much he dominated that clock in the first half, you know, I'm good now. I'm definitely good here, third down and five, and I'm not really worried too much about my offense because the offense, we only had, two like, one or two real drives. And the first one was like three now. Second one, we got a touchdown. And then that one drive before half was only like 10 yards. And now, all of a sudden, we're just moving the ball downfield. Now, we're establishing the run game pretty well. Ben Tate is putting moves on left and right, trying to spin out that one dude. But instead, Ben Tate actually gets injured and goes out for the game. So now, we bring in West here. And West does not get anything going, unfortunately. We lose yards on both plays. Now, all of a sudden, it's third and goal at the eight-yard line. So, we call a screen play, play of our own. It doesn't get picked off. And we hit the spin move. But don't ask me how to pronounce his name. And we get a touchdown out of that. So, I mean, the screen pass probably wasn't the best call there. But we made the spin move. And we made it work. Now, we're up 14 in this game. Up 14. I mean, like I said, the two touchdowns we gave up were off of blown coverages. But it's hard to recover from that stuff sometimes. I mean, if this was a muck game, I don't know. We would have recovered from it since it would be three-minute quarters. But since these games are pretty long, six-minute quarters, you know, we had plenty of time, too. Unfortunately, that third down and five, Vic is able to take off for the first down. But now we got to keep it going. Now we got to make sure we get this stop here. And, you know, you know this dude's probably going to kill a lot of clock on his drives. So we know that much. And if he wants to kill clock, that's fine, a 14-point game. Because it looks like he's probably not going to get any points before the start of the fourth quarter. You see Vic shaking off the sack there. Then Vic rolling back. Backward, I tackle my own guy, and then Mike Vick, as only Mike Vick can do, actually takes off and gets a first down out of this play. I'm just like, really though? I should have never dove. I actually, actually tackle with my own guys. Thankfully, there's Paul Kruger getting the sack in the next play. Knocks him right out of field goal range for Nick Folk. And then once again, he gets sacked trying to, you know, abuse Vic. And the Vic abuse will not be allowed today. Third down, 21 comes up. The pressure is coming. Vic is rolling backward, backward. I'm not quick enough. I'm letting the CPU do that. I'm not tackling my own guys. Desmond Bryan can get that tackle. And then fourth and 43, he just decided, you know what? I would rather just quit the game than even try to get a 4th and 43. So that's what he does. He just rage quits right there. Doesn't even pause. Just, you know, dashboard. So I hope you guys leave a like in the video. If you enjoyed that Vic versus Manziel gameplay, subscribe for more Man 15 gameplays and Ultimate Team and all that good stuff. And I will catch you guys next time.